when we talk about the founders of religions, we're really talking about religious origins both as described by the inhabitants of a particular religious world and as seen from the outside. In a way, a founder is someone who lays a foundation. Founding is a metaphor from the realm of construction work. Not all religions have founders. Religions like Australian Aboriginal religion created by the rainbow serpent or Hopi religion that tells an origin story of changing woman, or even ancient Hindu sonnet and dharma credited to ancient sages like Vashvamitra, shown here. These religions are generally ancient, with prehistoric origins and equally ancient origin stories. This is probably a good time to say that in the context of religious studies, the term myth does not mean the opposite of false, but rather it means symbolic story, the truth of which is foundational in and to its own religious world. So that the point is not whether a historical Noah actually built a literal ark or whether the seven original rishis of the Vedas actually sailed to safety with the guidance of an avatar of Vishnu. The point is that the people who tell this symbolic story think of themselves as having been saved from some disaster. And then there are religions that do have founding figures, whether legendary or conventionally historical. The defining feature of prophets, like Moses in Judaism, or Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, is that prophets speak the God's own words on behalf of God. This is what makes Joseph Smith, for instance, the historic founder of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or the Mormon Church, a prophet and L. Ron Hubbard, the historic founder of the Church of Scientology, not a prophet, but more like a sage. Sages, like the Buddha, founder of Buddhism, or Confucius, founder of Confucianism, pass on their own wisdom, wisdom they've gained from personal experience with ultimate being. In some religious worlds, people understand their religion to have been founded directly by divine action, as in Sri Vaishnava Hinduism, inaugurated by Radha and Krishna, or in Christianity, inaugurated by Jesus, according to Christians, the incarnation of God. The case of Jesus is particularly complicated because while Christians view Jesus as God, other religions also revere Jesus but as a prophet, as in Islam, or a sage, as in Hinduism. And there are good historical reasons to credit Jesus' followers, like the Apostle Paul, with the actual institutionalization of the Christian church. Finally, there are those figures that Richter labels secondary founders, like the early Jewish rabbis who were instrumental in creating rabbinic Judaism, or the Protestant reformers like Martin Luther and Huldrych Zwingli, who molded an alternative version of Christianity in 16th century Europe. And so such secondary founders may make us wonder what really distinguishes someone we would call a secondary founder, like William Seymour, who inaugurated Pentecostalism at the Azusa Street Revival in early 20th century Los Angeles, from a founder of a new religion like Leonard P. Howell, the earliest Rastafari? It's a good question, and especially because new religions keep coming into being, that question remains fresh. <laughs>